All right, I think we got enough folks to get going. Thank you for joining today. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm your host, Lindsay Watt, and today we got Doug Schreier, who introduced himself in a sec. We're going to be talking about building a powerhouse AI framework for your brokerage. That's a mouthful, but we're going to cover a lot of topics today. And thank you for giving us some time out of your day. A little bit of Q and A, or a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. This is recorded. We will share a copy of this with folks afterwards, so um, you, you'll have that. In addition, you'll see a button called Q&A, hopefully, on your screen. If you've got questions, drop them in there. We're going to make sure we have time at the end. And because we're talking about AI, a special offer today, which is there are no stupid questions. Like this is a brand new area. You can ask anything you want. We will try and answer it. Uh, I was certainly very confused by all this stuff when I started diving in a while back. So if you've got questions and you're confuzzled, feel free to ask. This is what we're here for today. Uh, there are no silly questions. So with that, I want to jump into a little bit of introductions, if I can figure out how to advance the slide. So here are your speakers today. You got myself. My name is Lindsay Watt. I am the VP of product at Parade. I've been here for about three and a half years. I've been in the brokerage space for about five and a half. I've been building technology for, for oh, it's been 20 years now. i got some gray hairs, um, including large startups, large companies like Amazon, building robots, et cetera. And I love AI as a consequence. I've been building with this for about 10 plus years now. Um, and I'm really excited that we're now at the point where we can bring it to every industry on earth. That's a bit of what we're going to talk about today. And we'll explain to you how Parade does some of that. With that, Doug, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey guys, Doug Schrar. Uh, I'm the VP of Growth Special Projects for McLeod. Been with McLeod for eight months now, but been in the transportation industry. It's, it's my true love for 14 years. Uh, seven years, eight years at a carrier and broker out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. In the last seven, eight years, um, really in freight tech and, and what freight technology can do for both brokers and carriers. Awesome. I'm going to stop sharing now. We're just going to focus on Doug and my beautiful face and have a nice uh, back and forth conversation. Um, one of the things that we were talking about, Doug and I, as we were kind of preparing this was AI is such a massive term, right? It's everywhere. You can't open the newspaper or turn on, turn on the TV without hearing the word AI, AI constantly thrown at you. And it can, it can feel pretty daunting to be like, what is this and how is it going to help my business and what should I do? And, and one of the themes is that AI is better together, right? The more partners you have to help you kind of understand it, the 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 better your business is going to have success, the more you're going to be able to, to do it. And so Doug, I wonder if you want to talk a little bit about that from a cloud's perspective, because you guys are doing some great stuff to try and help the, uh, the industry understand what does AI mean in the freight context? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, you know, first, uh, you know, we looked at AI as I came in and we're doing a bunch of great things here at McLeod. We had a full data science group and BI group, along with what we do with our core TMS and other products. Um, but I think everyone at this point were asking, how is AI going to impact us in the future? So uh, one of the things that we did in February and Lindsay did a great job speaking on one of our, our panels, uh, kind of AI from a vendor standpoint was we were able to bring over 150 customers into Birmingham and really explore um, where we're at, uh, where everyone is at on the journey. And I think everyone's kind of at that same point. Um, essentially at the starting line, maybe just starting to come off of the line, but everyone's trying to understand what this new generation of AI means and how it impact their business in the future. Um, so, with McLeod and, and our focus here, um, we really want to bring everyone together to agree to those use cases. Um, and I'm really excited about hearing from Lindsay uh, specific around the brokerage use cases that they're solving for today. I think it's a great opportunity. It got a lot of hype um, at the conference that we had. Um, and it was a big talking point too at TIA that we're just coming back from. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. Maybe Lindsay, uh, Talk to us a little bit about what Parade is doing within the AI front. For sure, yeah, I appreciate that. So at Parade, we kind of do two things, right? We help we help freight brokers buy and sell freight better, right? So half of our business is kind of looking at the shipper sales side, half of the business is looking at the carrier sales side. And we see some pretty interesting ways that AI can help you on both sides of the business, right? And so let me start with the carrier sales side, because I think this is, this is pretty neat stuff we've got there. Um, one of the things we've noticed, and I'm sure your customers have noticed too, because you have a lot of mutual ones, is their, their carrier sales teams are inundated with emails. There's just a ton of emails coming in saying like, hey, is this load available, et cetera. 
uh, you know, uh, do you still have this? Uh, uh, things like that. And when we talk to, to our customers, we realize, oh my gosh, this volume of email is is hurting your brokerage in a couple of ways, right? Number one, you're you're missing a lot of these emails. They're just coming so fast, your team can't get to them. They're very transactional. So, you know, if you answer an email an hour late, that truck is gone, right? You've missed it. And secondly, you're spending a lot of time on these emails and that's time that's not spent on outbound calls, building relationships, right? It's things like, yes, this load is still available. Would you like it, right? That's not a high value action by a carrier sales rep. We want those folks out calling carriers, negotiating. We want them building relationships. They can't do that with their answer email. And so we built a tool that helps you understand it actually will go and answer those emails for you. It's connected to McLeod. You can yeah. know all your load details. So when the carrier says, hey, is this load still available? It's smart enough to know, yes, it is, or it's not, right? And it's smart enough to know, hey, what exactly are the details of this load that a carrier is going to need because it's connected to McLeod? And then lastly, the nice thing is, is it's actually not going to stop at just the details. It's going to say, great, this load's available. And by the way, will you do it for this price, right? Or what price do you expect? And then we're going to create a quote and we'll push that into Parade and we'll push that into McLeod too, right? And so it's a great example of how we can go automate a lot of the simple stuff and free up using AI. And this is only possible now with the fancy like behind the scenes chat GPT. It's all this gen AI that you hear all about, but it works really well and it enables you to go and automate the simpler stuff and free up time for outbound and high value relationships, right? And works nicely with McLeod yeah. and Parade right out of the box. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know, I find that so interesting because, you know, email is a universal problem, right? It's not just a trucking problem. It's not just a brokerage problem, but everyone, including me, has emails as a problem, right? We get inundated with all these messages and, you know, we all try to be at inbox zero, even though for some of us, that's not achievable, where we're answering everybody in a timely fashion. I guess my first question around you know, this is with email being such a big global problem, uh, why take an industry specific focus and why does Parade kind of uniquely position um, to solve this for our brokerages in the space versus, let's say, a Microsoft or a Google? Yeah, totally. First of all, I love that you're an inbox zero guy. I have I have never successfully done that. I use some email program that'll show me a nice pretty picture if I get down to zero and I still fail. So if anyone on this phone has got down any tips for uh, how to how to get out of email inbox zero, please please drop in the Q and A because I need to learn. Um, <clears throat> but in terms of in terms of in terms of managing emails, I think the <clears throat> the 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 challenge for our industry is that. <clears throat> Freight is really nuanced and freight's really specific. And so we think that in order for anyone to be able to, you know, every brokerage has a very unique workflow around how they build carrier relationships, how they serve their shipper customers and how they deliver value along that entire time. And I frankly just don't think that the, the Googles and Microsofts of the world are ever going to frankly care enough about the freight industry, freight brokerage industry to build a really great solution for that. I think they're going to focus on the core tools like, oh, like we'll have AI models and stuff, but they're going to leave it to folks like McLeod and Parade to say, look, we're the experts in the freight space. We're the ones who know how to deploy the solutions that brokers need. And we're the ones who understand that when a carrier is asking for certain things, they need to know things like the pickup, the appointment time, the weight, et cetera. And that's where we can partner together to really serve the brokerage community and help folks. Yeah. So one of the themes that came out of the AI conference we had here in Birmingham is really around how do I get started, right? You talked about some great use cases that Parade has developed and can get people off the starting line. Um, but, you know, as we think about this, as we look forward, um, what's the best way uh, to get going uh, and to get past, uh, you know, that that starting point? For sure. So, so a bunch of things. The first, the good news is, I think if you're if you're on this call today and listening, you've already made a good investment in McLeod, so you're positioned to have a great start, right? You've got the technology bedrock underneath you in form in the form of a great TMS. Now you can start to say, what do I want to experiment with on top of that? And when I when I think about deploying something with AI, I think there's a couple of things you want to you want to understand, right? Number one is 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 there is there an area I can test that in the unlikely event that it goes wrong, wouldn't wouldn't be 
really bad for my business, right? right. I think that's one of the things that's nice about emails is you're not answering these emails already. So yeah. test it with a small group. And if you do, you'll see the results right away, right? So that's that should that should remove some of the fear of like, oh my gosh, if our team tries an AI test, this could be existential for business. It's not going to be. We can give it a try. It's a relatively risk-free trial, right? So that's part one. Part two is like any technology you're going to evaluate, what's the metric for success, right? How do you know it's going to work? And the thing, um, the thing we see is with customer after customer, when we've, we've deployed our, our parade co-driver solution on the cloud, right away, we see a couple of things happen. We see them get twice as many quotes on like twice as many of their loads quoted and twice as many quotes for each of those loads, right? So it's a 4X total. You should expect that too. The metrics are there to tell you what you should expect at the end of a trial. And that's a great place to be. Yeah, you'll absolutely. also see your phone, your phone, your phone dropping. And then the third component here, the third component is how long does this take, right? And so the nice thing is, Braid plugs nicely into McLeod. So if you've got the McLeod set up already, we can get you up and running in two weeks. You can run a two week trial. So all those things, small blast radius, pick an area that's not too dangerous. Know the numbers you're going to have that you want to get to. And then do it quick and you can scale it up. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I love sports analogies. And if you've ever talked to me, you, you I frequently will use them. Generally, uh, focus on football and baseball as, as that's what my kids play. Um, so I look at this and as I was talking through with a bunch of customers, people have a whole bunch of different use cases, right? Um, so when we think about AI, er, with AI, are we trying to hit a bunch of singles or are we trying to hit a few home runs, right? What would be the preferred approach or what would be your recommended approach when it comes to AI at a brokerage? Yeah, totally. And I love your sports analogies and I kind of want to, I kind of want to butcher them by being like, we're going to try to hit a home run, but we don't want to drop it on the goal line or something terrible like that. But uh, um, so my, my advice is to everyone is I think the way I think about it is um, AI has the potential to be a home run for every single brokerage but you don't become a 400 hitter overnight, right? So right. aim for a single, get to second base, et cetera. And that's why I think that's one of the reasons why I think it's exciting to think about it. Great. I can run a test on something like emails and then I can ramp it up to my entire brokerage as that, as that, ha that works. And that impact of turning off those, or like getting rid of those, like reducing that inbound for my entire brokerage is a home run. I'm yep. going to see that I can actually start to like, we have one customer who was like, Hey, I turned on co-driver capacity, trades capacity co-driver for my entire brokerage. That was the first time I hit my outbound numbers was when I actually was able to do that because parade did all the parade on top of McLeod, did the, did the emails freed up the time. We started hitting our outbound numbers, right? That's a home run. And the way they got that home run was first, they launched it in a small little team, right? Saw yep. that it worked, then quickly turned it on. It's the same wow. side on the shipper sales side of the business too, right? We, we over there, we used to make AI to help folks win more freight and help to actually like automatically place bids. That's another great example where you can roll it out with one or two shippers, right? There are lots of, there's lots of ways for you to deploy AI so you can get that single, double, build your Ted Williams like abilities and then start knocking it out of the park again and again. Awesome. Awesome. So sounds like we're working on some singles and then, you know, but these can easily get to where we're feeling like they're home runs, which makes sense to me. You know, one of the things I get to do a lot and we just came back from TIA and, you know, I'm back in Birmingham and I live in Tampa as I travel a lot. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago I was delayed. Um, it was interesting because while I was on the flight in today's world, I can be chatting with an agent. But immediately the agent I was talking to, I could tell it was AI. In fact, it told me it was AI. Um, as I worked through to try to get put on the you know, uh, standby and to book my second flight. If I couldn't get the standby uh, cleared, um, I ultimately moved from an AI assistant to a human person. And when we talk about the deployment of AI within freight tech, how do you think the customers and the third party carriers uh, need to know if they're dealing with Lindsay or if they're dealing with a great AI solution that Lindsay created? Um, how should we tell them? Totally. And I think I think the jury's still out. I don't think we actually know yet. And I think we're all still working that through. But there's certain, you know, there's certain guardrails that we're putting in place and certain we call them tenants that guide guide how we think about this. And so one of the things I think it's really critical is that your carrier has to have 
a great experience with any AI we're deploying, right? If it's a poor carrier experience, we cannot create a situation where carriers don't want to work on us because they don't feel that we respect them or we we are going to uh, uh, treat them as second class citizens. That'd be a very poor situation, right? And so we focus really at Parade being like, number one, how do we meet carriers the way they're talking about today? And so a lot of these emails that come in are, are very transactional, right? And so same things like if someone says a customer a question like, hey, um, you know, is this load available? They're not looking for a flowery reply. They're looking right. for like, yes, it is. And here are the details. Do you want? That is how the system works, right? That's how the, that's how we're today. If you were talking on the phone, that's how it is. And then when the system gets confused, I think the next thing is like, which can happen if someone says something really crazy. But in that situation, we want to gracefully hand it off to a human, just like you had your experience there, right? And so it's like, hey, look, you know what? I'm not sure. Let's get back to you. Let's hand it off to a human so that they can go do the work and close this deal and, and build that relationship. And so that's that's what we've seen work really, really well so far. Um, our customers are happy with it, but it's still very early days here. Yeah. So, so first, you know, a lot of these emails are going unresponded to. So any response, whether automatic or from a human is, is appreciated. Um, but really the metric here is around speed to answer. If I am replying, um, you know, are the carriers, you know, your third party carriers, you know, are the uh, shippers and, and customers, um, do they care um, truly if, if they get into speed that they want back if you're giving them the quote and the pricing back quickly and then you guys follow through um with this um kind of what's what's your viewpoint there around speed oh, yeah we speed matters in business is our viewpoint right like that is that is entirely our viewpoint um freight brokerage is highly highly time sensitive right and so if you can if you can respond to someone faster and our goal is we see 95 percent of our emails answered in 10 seconds or or, or less um you're you're honoring your carriers in that situation and you're building relationships. And it's the same with bidding on the on the on the yeah. on the freight side, right? When your shipper is looking for prices, if you can give them prices faster and you can give them more price action on their side, they're going to respect that. They're going to say, hey, you're providing me better quality service. You're giving me more liquidity on my loads. And I'm going to invite you into the contract. Right. So speed matters in business, speed especially matters in the freight brokerage industry. Absolutely. It's great points. Um, it's funny, I, I get an opportunity to look at a lot of startups, you know, as we think out there and parades far from a startup, but it seems like every startup today is a dot AI um, solution, right? You know, they're selling something that's AI. Things that we called something completely different last year is now called AI today. Um, so as we think about this and as our customers start to look at what their journey in AI is and where they want to invest, right? How do you recommend, you know, that they evaluate it or look at it to determine something that may be vaporware, you know, startup that had it's a great idea, but never executed from a technology standpoint to something that actually can be deployed uh, today and something that is integrated already with their TMS. And a lot of the solution, right? Because what we're doing is connecting data and machine learning and really accelerating, you know, the connection with people to the data we have um, is getting them connected to that key data. Um, how do you recommend a organization starts this journey and evaluates different AI providers? Oh, totally. Great, great stuff. So a couple of thoughts for you. Number one is I think um, if you're on this call, you've already actually put yourself in a good position because you're probably a cloud customer or considering being a cloud customer and you're going to have a pretty solid TMS underneath, right? And that is really, really helpful because when you when you got a, when you got a partner like McLeod, a couple things are going to happen. Number one, you guys have 20, 30 years of figuring out how to structure data so that it can be reused in many different ways. And so, just using the tool you already have is going to help you um, better be set up for your AI journey. Second thing is, is you got you got the fact that that frankly, you folks are pretty good at vetting folks as well to bring in new partners to help with AI, right? So you're you're able to keep some of that vaporware at bay just by virtue of of, of, of uh, how you help your customers, right? And then the third thing is, is like any new technology, I would really look for some of the social proof, right? Some some freight brokers out there, you might want to be the first to try something. If you are, fantastic, go for it. But a lot of folks are like, you know what? I don't want to be the I don't want to be the pioneer. I want to be the second person. I want to be the second person, the fast follower, right? And if that's the case, 
make sure you get that social proof, right? And so figure out like, are there, are there case studies there? Do you have a vendor who can quickly work with you? And then the, we spent a lot of time talking about how to, how to actually deploy. Right. I think you should look for like any good deployment. Can I do this? Do I know the measure of success? Can I get it quickly? Right. And if you can get all of those, that's going to eliminate the the fear of vaporware, the, the fear of FUD that can happen. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I want to be respectful of timing. We want to be able to get to some Q&As, but I got one last question before we kind of recap here. I think it's an important one, you know, so it, as a brokerage, one of your key aspects is your relationships with carriers and your relationships with your shippers. Specifically, as shippers are all trying to run their own AI initiatives, you know, whether it be, you know, intelligent manufacturing or how they, you know, dispatch, you know, freight to their brokerage or carriers. Do they care where you are on a journey as a brokerage? Is this a selling point and creating new relationships or extending your relationships with your current customers? Yep. Yep. So we have, we have, um, we've had a couple of folks kind of come to us and say, Hey, I've made big investments in McLeod, I made big, big investments in McLeod uh, Parade. How can you guys help me explain to our shippers why we are a better brokerage because of this, right? right? And it's been a lot of fun to do that because we're able to show them how the investments you're making in technology and AI are leading to really good things for shippers, such as your ability to offer better service, right? All of the stuff that we're doing here with responding to emails and all these other things, it's about building those better carrier relationships, getting those carriers working with you, and that leads to better outcomes for your shippers, right? You get the same carriers working the same yards. Your shippers see better quality of service. They see you bidding on more freights. They can do higher concentration of vendors, which may reduces some of their overhead. So all these investments you're making in your TMS and AI are paying off uh, in spades for you with better shipper relationships and improved outcomes. So shippers very much do care that you're continuing on this journey so you can better support them. Yeah, that makes sense for sure. Uh, well, it's been a great conversation today. I always love talking with you, Lindsay, and understanding what Parade's doing. You know, one of our things here at McLeod is that we want to be the most complete and productive TMS. Um, of course, a huge focus of that is partners like Parade. Um, partners like Parade drive massive productivity uh, to the front line. And what we're trying to do and ensure that we're doing, I think from both of our sides, is making sure that connections there, that the software works day one, and that they see value from day one. So, you know, with that, you know, really appreciate Parade um, and the AI that you're bringing to the table. It helps us unlock that value uh, for our customers. And I think AI is going to be that next uh, level of productivity for our customers. So if you've not already invested in AI or at least started the evaluation, and understanding your use cases today was a great first step, um, but you know we definitely uh, you know, would challenge you to begin to look at what your biggest use cases are, start to prioritize them, and then connect with people at McLeod and people at Parade that have you know basically lived this and breathed this for the last several years. Um, so with that, let's open up for for Q and A. It looks like we have several already in. Yeah, we got a couple. I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off. One is, are there any visuals with this demo? And well, not yet. This is the visual. It's right here. You can see the left. You can see the right. No, I'm kidding. Um, we, we'll, uh, we're we going to follow up with every single person on this call, and you'll have the opportunity to get a demo of CoDriver, and we'll go through it. Um, it's actually quite boring to watch a demo of an email getting responded to. So we thought we'd give you a conversation today, but we're absolutely happy to set that up for anyone you know who would like it. Awesome. And the next one, I think, pertains to both Parade and the cloud, but specifically Parade, um, you know, what are the security features uh, against AI-enabled bots and spams coming in through the inbox? Yeah, no, that's a good one. Um, so one of the things that we do is we will not actually respond to emails. Um, sorry, we will respond to emails, but we'll verify the carrier. And so there's a big step in making sure, hey, is this actually a carrier we want to work with? Um, before we're going to start to share your load information, right? So we totally yeah. share that where, hey, like this, this should not be a backdoor to understand all my freight. Um, and so we've got we've got some guardrails there to make sure that uh, no particular carrier is running away with with all of your information. Great question. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, it makes a 
all the sense of the world, we we too at McLeod make sure that we know who we're doing business with, right? And you shouldn't just be giving your information out to people that you don't know and that you haven't validated. So uh, key aspects there. We'll see if we have any. Yeah, any Doug, we got we going here. So for McLeod globally, you know, kind of where do you see AI having the biggest impact for brokers and carriers and folks? Any any sort of sort of thirty thousand foot perspective you guys can offer us from what you've seen the. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's going to actually morph, and you know, we're seeing a lot around generational AI, and you know, whether it's email respondents or quote responses. Um, um, but when it all boils it down, it's around productivity. And you know, also a big area I think of AI, and, you know, ingestion within the TMS and other tools is decision support, right? So even if they say, hey, listen, I love the email scraping, I love the ability to generate a response, but I want my person to see that first. My question would be why, right? And what information do they need to make that better decision? So whether it's what I quote and how I quote it, whether it's making sure I have capacity within the market. Uh, and the carrier is pretty simple. I have a truck or I don't have a truck, but how do I drive up utilization? It, in my mind, there's a whole bunch of little things around decision support. Uh, once you get decision support locked in, then it's around acceleration and automation. Um, but we're going to be hitting a whole lot of singles that again, collectively will mean, you know, we're hitting grand scrams, but I don't think it's just going to be one solution. I think it's going to be many uh, that will unlock value in the back office and your frontline operations. Nice. And speaking of that, someone's asking how we unlock that today by saying, you know, how your response is generated on the carrier sales side. Are you creating your own language model using ML to teach the system how to recognize and create accurate responses to carrier requests? So what we've done there is uh, at Parade, we're very fortunate um, to have a large corpus of emails. We have a very good sense of how, what are the sort of questions that carriers can ask. And so we have tuned a large language model to be able to actually uh, understand those extremely well. And then this is the key thing when it comes to actually creating accurate responses, this gets back to something that Doug mentioned earlier, which is about the quality of the data. And so yeah. generating an accurate response, I think of as kind of two key things. Number one is, do I have good structured data to respond with, load details, et cetera? Well, we've got that with McLeod. And the second thing is, <clears throat> Can I explain that in a way that a carrier understands? Can I put that out in a way that's going to make sense for them? And so we know pretty well how to format emails for a carrier to say, hey, here's exactly the information you want. It doesn't actually require a lot of fancy emails to do that. It's just basically templates. This, yeah. this, these are fairly simple conversations. But that combination of like a tuned machine learning model, great data, and simple templating on the carrier sales side means that we can answer questions really, really well for carriers. Perfect. Makes a lot of sense here. Well, we got two minutes left. Um, Lindsay, any other questions you oh, may have? We actually have? got one last question, which oh, is one last question. Are you using? We use, so we use Alyssa, uh, we use OpenAI on our side. Um, we are somewhat model agnostic. Uh, we do load balance amongst a bunch of services so that the, nothing yeah. goes down. Uh, um, but we're, we're big fans of what OpenAI is doing. It works pretty darn well. Yep. Absolutely. Appreciate everyone's time today. We'll follow up, get you a demo uh, of anything that we talked about today. And Doug, thank you for joining. Thanks for having us. Thank you, guys.